you guys hear me? Okay. Okay, um, can you guys hear me? Yes. All right, cool. Um, yeah, I was having trouble hearing you guys over, uh, over the epic music. Let me try that one more time. And there we are again. Okay, so uh, what I'm doing right now is working on an big shot in some code. So I'm just going to show you some of what I'm doing and how I do it. And hopefully this is interesting, but it's going to be really technical. I'm trying to figure out how to make the microphone louder, as I am saying to Genesee and you guys both. Um. Well, it is what it is. We'll have to use chat. Okay, so... Um, so, what I am doing right now is that uh, you know we have scaled our server pretty well and you know we're in the stage of like 500 players at a time um, and uh, but unfortunately we kind of hit a wall on that and we had trouble scaling above that because as we added more and more cores and more and more threads we weren't able to go above that and if you know what um, if you know some programmer type stuff, what was happening to us is we were essentially hitting a bottleneck on our memory allocator. And you know, there's computers have memory, and there's something that divides it up in there, and you know, and hands out little pieces. And that became a bottleneck of sh sharing that among all the threads. So what I'm doing today is uh, working on something to break us beyond that, and you know, from the 5,000 to 50,000 level. Um, well, maybe not 50,000, but so, um, anyway, uh, what we're doing is, uh, what I'm doing with this is basically saying instead of having this one super process that's split among a whole lot of threads and each of those and handling lots and lots of clients in one single process, I'm taking our network code and splitting it off into kind of like proxy clients where the server itself will only have you know 50 to 100 clients connected and then you know, those clients will actually be you know little teeny Linux boxes that we have and then each of those will be handling maybe a hundred clients of their own instead of having all the clients hitting one server so um, that's uh, that's the basic theory of what I'm doing today and I've just started work on that, so you kind of get uh, that new project smell here. And so, um, anyway, I'm pretty much just going to be talking as I go, and I'm going to keep an eye on chat. And if you guys have questions about what I'm doing, uh, just you know, be noisy, and I will do my best to respond to you guys. And you know, and. We'll, uh, we'll get our numbers where we need to be. Um, so what's over here is what I call the is um, you know, network states over here is the 
the part of the is pretty much something I've pulled out of our client to become the core of this new project. Uh, yeah, um, static cast versus uh, <laughs> static cast versus plain old cast. Pretty much um, for something like just casting a float, I prefer you know if it's just like changing one numeric type to another, I like to just use the old school cast because I'm old school and then when I'm working on classes and things I'll use explicit static cast or const cast or reinterp cast to um, to just you know be sure about what's actually happening there and there's actually one really cool thing I've got in here that uh, we in addition to the basic C++ stuff of static and const and uh, reinterpret um, we use something called assert cast and what that is is these little lines right here it works just like a static cast except in debug builds it uh, does a dynamic cast and that you know so when the game actually is out there running on your computer it's every bit as fast as a full static cast because this stuff will optimize out but under the hood, uh, you know, in our own internal testing, then it does a check to make sure that you're doing the right thing at runtime right. Um, so, uh, <laughs> you should definitely upgrade to Amiga. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the game is not going to run on the C64. You need at least a C128. So coming over here, um, again, this is really like just at the start of making this new project um, that's going to take care of like all of your clients. Starting by, uh, you know, I have the basic network structures and states pulled out into a library that the client can share. And then what I'm doing here is adding the very first actual file to the user proxy project. And um, I'm going to call that one, uh, let's call it uh, user, user connection.h, and there'll be a C++ file that matches that. Um, and this is, in a lot of ways, going to be a mirror of the uh, C sharp user connection.cs that we have in the uh, main server process. And coming off of that, we're also going to be, yes, what, uh, what Narthus has said. We are pulling our user connection manager out into a C++ version to run on, uh, you know, to get more performance out of it and also kind of act as a proxy. There was a, com yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm stroking my gray beard here as we uh, talk about the Commodore 64 and 128. So, um, always important to start off with your pragma once and your include guards. The reason I do that is so that if someone includes this file multiple times, then I don't have, then it will still work fine. And a lot of times you'll get that happening by accident because, like, indirectly, one thing will include it like nine ways in. Um, so, that's why we do that. And uh, here we go with the class user connection for the very first time. And, you know, moving this over to something that. And what this is going to be is it's going to be the class that sits in kind of these user proxies and that your client will connect to instead of connecting directly to the main server. And so there'll be you know, probably a hundred of these guys hanging out in the, probably a hundred of these guys hanging out in the main server process. And, uh, can you guys even see why I'm typing? It looks really small to me. So I'll zoom in some more. Um, and standard destructors and constructors. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up another project. Actually, I'm going to just, instead of doing that, I'm going to open up just uh, the user connection C sharp file from the main server code and sort of run down and build a copy of that in C++ as opposed to C sharp. Here we go. Here's a huge mass of code that I'm bringing in. I don't know if you can hear in the background, but we're about to get an epic thunderstorm. So, if uh, fortunately I'm working on the laptop. Let's see, and where to start with, you know, a file of this size? Um, probably the first thing I'm going to do. I just realized I need a couple more files out of the original client um, to sort of mirror things. So I'm going to go. So I am going to go over to here and I'm going to open the original client project. And Um, I'm navigating through all these directories. Uh, you, we use Perforce for our source control on most of the projects. It's something that, um, you know, there are a lot of nice solutions for managing assets and there are not a lot of nice solutions for managing like actual C++ file. Um, so what we have is, um, but there's very few solutions that work well for both, and that's why the game industry kind of is in love with... Uh, actually, the router does have a UPS. I, <laughs> I care about this. I care about this a lot. Um, yeah, so I will be online even if the power goes out, but it may get dark. Um, yeah, why Perforce and not get... A, I guess there's probably a lag. It's Perforce handles giant binary assets like you have in games a lot of the time, and you really don't want to use distributed version control for you know a terabyte of raw art files, for instance, because that's not something you want to mirror to everyone's computer. Uh, so um, anyway, loading up the client and. Coming over here, um, yeah, no looking at the physx source, that's super secret NVIDIA sauce. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my core networking structures and turn them into, and pull them out of uh, the main client and hoist them up to be part of a reusable library. Um, So here is something called packet flags that it implements just a little teeny kind of sliding window of bit field of bit flags to say like, hey, this packet has been received and this one hasn't. Um, so I'm going to rename this to something called flag window to kind of better represent what it is that's not just packets and search and replace packet flags everywhere in the project well, I'm actually connect this uh, And everywhere in this project, and I'm going to change it to flag window.